So for those of you that are primarily interested in using deliberate cold exposure to increase dopamine levels in your brain and body, you can also do a combined protocol whereby you ingest caffeine 60 to 120 minutes before the deliberate cold exposure. This is based on a study that I've talked about before entitled Caffeine Increases Striatal Dopamine D2, D3 Receptor Availability in the Human Brain. And as the title suggests, this study was done on humans looking at the density and or efficacy of these dopamine receptors in an area of the brain called the striatum, which is involved in planning and action and also suppressing planning and action. It's involved uh, very closely with whether or not we can engage in behavior and withhold behavior, the so-called go and no-go pathways in the brain. Dopamine plays a critical role in that and many other things as well as uh, you now know. So why would you want to ingest caffeine 60 to 120 minutes before deliberate cold exposure? Well, as I talked about earlier, dopamine can increase quite substantially in response to deliberate cold exposure, but dopamine on its own doesn't do anything. It has to bind to receptors. And this paper shows quite definitively that ingesting caffeine, in this case, it was 300 milligram dose of caffeine, which is about the dose of caffeine in two or three cups of coffee. It depends on the strength of the coffee, of course, but it's not an outrageous amount of caffeine. That increases the density and or efficacy of these receptors, which would allow that dopamine to have its greatest effect. And for those of you that want to get really, really fancy, I suppose you could do this fasted. So you get the further increase in norepinephrine then you get the dopamine increase from the cold exposure, the binding of the dopamine. Although I do want to point out that at some point you start layering together enough protocols that you would be spending your entire day trying to get this dopamine pulse. And I would hope that you had would have other activities that you would engage in. But if you're getting up in the morning and you're fasted because you haven't eaten all night and you have a cup of coffee and then 60 minutes later, you take your cold shower or two hours later, you do your cold immersion or your cold shower, you would be layering together these different mechanisms of dopamine receptors, epinephrine and so forth in a way that at least to me doesn't seem um, incompatible with having some other life like going to school and having relationships, et cetera. And this increase in dopamine, particularly in the striatum, is not a trivial one. I do want to point out, as the authors do, that preclinical studies have shown that increases in striatal dopamine induced by things like modafinil, which is used to treat ADHD and uh, treat narcolepsy, is necessary for their wake-promoting actions. What this really says is that just having elevated levels of dopamine from a drug or from an ice bath or what have you is not sufficient to get the effects of dopamine. You really need the receptors to be available and you need those receptors to be available in the appropriate density and you need those receptors to be available in the appropriate density in the striatum in particular. So I think there are a number of reasons why if it's compatible with the other aspects of your health, because of course, always you have to consider this on a background of cardiovascular health and blood pressure, et cetera, that ingesting a cup or two of coffee an hour before your ice bath, maybe fasted, uh, as well could be quite beneficial for increasing dopamine over quite extended periods of time.